After the Supreme Court voted to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade decision, the resulting reproductive freedom landscape became very complex. Here in studio with us to navigate what this historic decision means about the future of being female and reproductive health is activist and advocate Loretta Ross. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me. Let's get started with defining what is reproductive justice. Well, reproductive justice was a concept 12 black women created in Chicago in June of 1994 because we were impatient with the pro-choice, pro-life binary that failed to adequately express what we needed from reproductive politics. So basically, we joined with the pro-choice movement in fighting for the right not to have a child. And so that includes support for abortion, birth control, and abstinence, if you can hold on, I mean abstinence, right? <laughs> anyway, but because we were black women, always subjected to thinking that we have too many babies, we have to fight for the right to have the children that we want to have and the conditions under which we want to have them. So that means refusing an unnecessary C-section or having your birth plan respected when you go to the hospital or using a midwife or a doula if you prefer. And then the third tenet, is the right to raise our children in safe and healthy environments because neither the pro-choice nor the pro-life movement focuses on what happens when the baby is here. Mm -hmm. And so the right to have a child, not to have a child, and to raise your children are the three core tenets of reproductive justice. All right, let's pivot a little bit and talk about what is reproductive futurism. Well, reproductive futurism is a concept I've been thinking about I didn't coin the term reproductive futurism. <laughs> that actually was coined by the LGBTQ movement. But I'm applying it to use the lens of reproductive justice to really criticize or at least examine this techno-utopia that all the people who are promoting all of these unfounded promises of what technical adva advancements are going to do mm -hmm to the human species, mm -hmm. they really need to be examined because first of all, all of our technology, like social media, may be used to upgrade present day inequalities because we have not addressed the underlying causes of misogyny and racism and homophobia and transphobia. And so we'll just have better means of implementing the same old ideas if we don't pay attention, but also, Techno-utopia overpromises. They convince women, for example, to pay $20,000 for an IVF treatment without telling them that only 13% of stored eggs ever result in successful pregnancies. So you've got an 87% failure rate for something you just spent $20,000 a try on. And many people have to try multiple times mm -hmm. because it's not just one time, you got to do it multiple times. And they're not telling people the medical risk of egg harvesting and... The cancer concerns right. down the road. They're not mm -hmm. telling. There's no full medical disclosure required of them, so they're not doing it. And so I am concerned that unrestricted reproductive technology that doesn't have moral boundaries or guidelines will end up exploiting vulnerable and desperate people who want to express their right to parent in the way that they want to and can be easily manipulated and suffer me mental health damages because of it. Loretta, thank you so much for your time today. This has been a pleasure. Thank you for interviewing me. Bye-bye.